as recorded by Matthew. Matthew the 15th chapter beginning with the 21st verse and a few of the following. And um, I commend those of you who stand to give honor to the reading of God's word. It is no less honor if you don't stand. I have kinfolk here. You all wave your hand there from the Carolinas. Um, I won't begin calling names. I'll forget to call the right name. And as you see me depart after the sermon, I, we're, we're moving to another space for another time and venue. So thank you for your understanding. And I've given my president an offer uh, for her and for her gift. And that's not a Missouri fact. It's a chapter of faith. He reads the word of God. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered her, one great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. I want to tell you today, particularly our women here, take your chance. Give God some praise for what he's about to tell you. To deal with God, you have to operate on the grounds of faith. Not logic or lucidity. Not through human reasoning or philosophical implementation. The capacity of your brain cannot comprehend all there is to know about God. Hence to deal with God is to operate on the premise of faith. In fact, we are admonished and reminded in scripture that we move, manage, and meander through the minutia of life by faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, you can't please God without faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, The just shall live, walk, eat, sleep, commute, work, worship, and exist by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. Since there is so much emphasis on faith, God, through the Holy Writ, will not emphasize the exercise of faith. Had God no intentions or had no intentions of rewarding faith. Faith got a hundred year old Abraham and a 90-year-old self 
a newborn baby. Faith got Moses a freedom plan for Israel in Egypt. Faith got Joshua a walkathon around the walls of Jericho. Faith fireproofed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for a fiery furnace and provided fellowship with the Lord while walking around in the flame. Faith uh, released Paul, Silas, and Peter from Roman incarceration without judge, jury, or injunction. Faith watched Jesus drop his head in the locks of his shoulders on Bad Friday and then witnessed his resurrection three days later from a cold and darkened grave. Faith got you here and where you are today. Here is how Andre Sonny Woods said it. Vanessa Bell Armstrong made such lyrical expression famous. He said it is the kind of faith that can conquer anything. I have the faith that sees the invisible, expects the incredible, receives the impossible because it is a faith that can conquer anything. Faith to reach the unreachable. Faith to remove the unmovable. Faith to defeat the unbeatable and faith to expect the impossible. I have faith that envisions my freedom and faith to know that God could solve all of my problems. I have faith that can conquer anything. That black thing, that white thing, that white supremacist thing, that political partyism thing, that sovereignty in America thing, that mega thing, that money thing, that debt thing, that danger thing, that problem thing, that man thing, that woman thing, that home thing, that husband thing, that church thing, faith that can conquer in there. Particularly, that demon thing. Because in all actuality, this is what plagues the world. This is what petrifies progress. Uh, this is what impedes the itinerary of the congregation of the redeemed. That demon thing is the same thing that affected the life of a woman who was considered by Matthew or identified as a Canaanite woman from the region of Tyre and Sidon. Some pronounce it Sidon. It depends upon or depends on who taught you. Mark called her Syrophoenician. He did so because his audience were Greeks and therefore understood the appellation in that vein. Matthew called her a Canaanite because his audience were Jews. In either case, the identity references a Gentile who is or was referenced as a non-Jew from the region of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre in the Greek expression literally means rock. Sidon or Sidon means hunting, which in Eastern culture, ancient Eastern culture, was a hard, tough task as they hunted with spear and arrow and knife. Thus, Jesus in this instance 
reveal to his immediate followers, otherwise described as Christians, that their ministry would always be met with a demon thing. That's described as being between a rock and a hard place. I want to say a word to every woman in this place today that if you are expecting ministry to be peaceful and pleasant and palatable and couchy and kosher and comfortable and congenial and without any kind of resistance, surprise, surprise, you got to deal with that demon thing. What has the world in the shape that it is in today is because of that demon thing that, that instigated an insurrection against the United States of America was a demon thing that, that kills people, innocent defenseless people in the streets and goes into schoolhouses and gunned down children who went to learn but left in body bags were instigated by a demon thing our history is being pulled from bookshelves all over this nation because they are threatened by the truth and it's instigated by a demon thing. Our voting rights are being dismantled as I speak all over Washington, D.C. and it's instigated by a demon thing. But I'm not worried today. I like my chances because even though we have the presence of the demon thing, we've got the power of Almighty God. So don't you worry, don't you fret, don't you become disheartened. say something like something going on in the neighborhood or around the church. You don't mean to handle that, Pastor? <laughs> I, I, I need to kind of go back there and stand by that sound system. <laughs> entity to overcome but we can witness the defeat of the demonic 
if we resolve within our spirit to take chances. Can I tell you what your chances will provide you with? Your chance gives you an opportunity to put your mouth on the map. Every human circumstance that presents itself as adversarial or antagonistic to progress, peace, and prosperity is generally handled with outcry. Therefore, the voice of hunger cries for food. The voice of loneliness cries out for company. The voice of inequality cries out for justice. The voice of despair and despondency cries out for resources. The voice of darkness cries out for light. Sorrow cries out for joy. Death cries out for life. This woman had to deal with a demonic circumstance. So she cried out. And maybe that's the reason why some people never give witness to the word of God while worship is going on. They never clap their hands and they never shout for joy. It's because they've never been in a circumstance where they had to cry out. You see, your voice changes when your back is against the wall. Your voice changes when you're broke. Lest anybody walks around sporting some air of arrogance as though you're doing the women's auxiliary a favor by being present and that you're doing God a favor by showing up in your red and white. You look real pretty. But if it had not been for the Lord on your halfway saying amen sign, you wouldn't be where you are today. Your voice changes when you're down. That's why some of these people in here, they, they're shouting hallelujah because they know how hurt feels. They're shouting praise the Lord because they know how it feels to have problems that you can't solve. They're shouting for joy because they know how it feels to suffer. So this woman found the immediate proximity of the Savior and begin to cry out. And Jesus did not respond right away. So this woman did not change her plea. She just changed her position. And nothing happened until she assumed a different posture. Because there are a whole lot of people who are in God's ear, but they never bow at his feet. And when she made it to his feet, she shifted positions and got out of his ear and got at his feet. And I'm a witness that if you bow at his feet, you can get what he's got in his hand. So she put a mouth on the map. Um, generally, um, in the event of um, unwarranted circumstances, um, that is when we've got it bad here below. We put our mouths on the situation. So since you are complaining and pine and opine your circumstance here below and that you got it bad, you know that you're going to put your mouth on it when you get it good from above. When I was much more of a boy than I am now, uh, we played outside a lot. Children didn't have, we didn't have video games in our own rooms and televisions and beds. We, we slept three to a bed, two up, two down, alternate each night. 
wake up any given morning with a new cologne you were wearing. <laughs> somebody couldn't keep it in the bottle. <laughs> but when we would play outside and got quiet, all of a sudden you would hear my mother or some adult somewhere in a neighboring house stand at a window or doorway and just ask, y'all too quiet, what are y'all doing out there? My brothers and my sisters, as good as God has been to you, y'all are too quiet out there. You mean to tell me God has made a way for you and you won't sit there like a knot on a log? If God has made a way for you, you ought to put your mouth on it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If he picked you up and turned you around, you ought to put your mouth on it. If he made your enemy your footstool, put your mouth on it. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I need about 99 women. I'll make 100 who won't mind right now saying, I'm going to put my mouth on it. You know, back in the country, they said something like this. Doc Smith, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I couldn't keep it. I don't think some of y'all can keep it. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I'm so proud of you. got a chance now. Chance enables you to get closer to the Savior. This woman cried out from a distance for Jesus to do something. Lord, have mercy. He didn't answer. And he uh, nearly entertained a satanic suggestion. As the disciples said to Jesus, relating misinformation, make her go away because she keeps crying after us. We had a mother of our church, Miss Rebecca Butler. She was a she was a full figure woman. No offense to women who are blessed. <laughs> Smell like a rose, dressed like a queen every Sunday. And Miss Butler had the gift of gab. And uh, she, everybody, everybody called everybody darling, everybody darling, so and so and so darling. And she would always come to our house at the end of church service and eat at our, our house. And one day she had the nerve to ask my father to say the blessing. Now it's in his house. She said, say the blessing, darling. We ready to say the blessing, darling. And my father bowed his head, everybody bowed his head, bowed, bowed their heads. And after a while, we heard my father, father fork scraping the plate. And he raised up, my father was eating. <laughs> and Miss Butler said, we didn't hear you pray, darling. You didn't, you didn't pray. And my father said, Miss Butler, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> the disciples didn't get it right. She didn't cry after them. Simon didn't cry out to Peter, he's too much of a denier. Simon didn't cry out to Thomas, he was too much of a doubter. Didn't cry out to Judas, he was the one who was a thief and a liar. My brothers and sisters, she cried out to the one who was able to give her some relief. Somebody in this place ought to be grateful today that you got a direct path to the Lord Almighty. The disciples didn't wake her up that moment. The disciples didn't wake you up this morning. The disciples didn't start you on your way. You need to cry out to somebody who could hear your cry and answer your call. I know I've got to go. I know I've got to go. I know I've got to go. She moved closer. Now we serve a God who can move quicker than right now. 
In the words of Caesar Arthur Walter Clark, God can move quicker than right now and sooner than at once. But friends, if you want God to move, you got to move closer to God. And when you move closer to God, you'll see seas become sidewalks. You'll see lines dim become sleeping parties. You'll see fiery furnaces become fellowship halls. You'll see jail cells become worship centers. When you get closer to God, oh, I'm sorry. Let me let earth, wind, and fire tell you, I like the way he moves. At the Red Sea, he moved. In the lion's den, he moved. At Jericho, he moved. And one Friday, on a hill called Calvary, he moved. And three days later, he got up from the grave. I like the way he moves. He moved early this morning, stood by your bedside, and walked you up and started you on your way. I like the way he moved. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus finally responded. Um, if I had time, I'd tell you that when you move closer to the Lord, you, you find out that delay is not denied. Uh, but certainly you find out that, uh, that uh, priority does not mean exclusion. Jesus said, um, I've been sent to the house of Israel. Uh, and it's not right uh, to give the children bread. To dogs. Jesus also said in John chapter 10, verse 16, the other sheep I have that are not of this folk. This woman was from the region of Tyre and Sidon. In any case, all Gentiles beyond the pedigree of Jews in Jerusalem were called dogs. So the woman pulled a carpet on Jesus and said, Yes, Lord, I understand. That um, the children's bread go to the children. But um, sometimes they drop stuff. We have a miniature schnauzer in our house. Her name is Layla. We've had her for some 16 years, sweetest thing. And uh, for many, many years, our granddaughter stayed with us in our house. And I don't know if she and Layla had a game going. When she didn't want her food, she kind of catch us looking off. And Layla developed a habit of just going and sitting by her chair because she knew something was going to fall. Come on, come on, paint it. So Layla didn't bark. Layla didn't whimper. Layla never whined. Layla just put herself in position. And when the crumb dropped, Layla ate everything everybody else was eating and never went to adultery. Come here for me. This woman said to Jesus, I know in my colored imagination, preaching imagination, she said, I don't know. I know you don't own German shepherds. You don't own poodles. You don't own shih tzus or snipes, schnauzers. You don't, you don't have Yorkshires or Pekingese and, and, um, and you don't have any Pomeranians. Uh, but, but even though uh, I'm a dog, I'm your dog. And you do know that Jesus has some dogs. Jesus has some mean dogs. Some mad dogs. Jesus has some messed up dogs. Lazy dogs. Stingy dogs. Cheap dogs. Bad dogs. Selfish dogs. Some think they're the big dog. And some think they're the only dog. But whatever dog I am, I'm still in the house. You missed your shout, kid. He didn't leave me on the he let me in the house and whatever falls from the master's table, I can survive on the master's throne. Talk to me, somebody. I got to quit somewhere. She said, yes, Lord.
that whatever dog you are, I'm a redeemed dog. I'm a sanctified dog. I'm a heaven bound dog. I'm a blood bought, blood washed, blood clean, heaven bound, feet set on the glory road kind of dog. And whatever dog you want to call me, I'm still in the house. Can I get a window? So, 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 Mama said it this way, I know I am a child of God. Although I move so slow, but I'll wait until my change. You don't mind if I celebrate a little just you know, you, 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 you know, black preacher, the black preacher celebrate it. He got to holler or something. Although I move so slow, but I'll wait until, yeah, my change shall come. And then move as God commands. Thank God you're in the house. No wonder David said, I will dwell in the household of God all the days of my life. Oh, praise his name. Thank God we still have a chance. This woman decided to take a chance with Jesus. And she went to where Jesus Christ was located and cried out, Lord, have mercy. Jesus saw and recognized her faith and affected her situation at home. That is to say, as I bid you good day today, that uh, your chances, uh, yeah, you got to take a chance by uh, following Jesus with uh, blind faith. It took faith to get to Jesus, and it took faith for her to uh, believe what Jesus said. He said, so be it according to your faith. My brothers and my sisters, God I serve is a rewarder of faith. No wonder the old black church said, we've come this far by faith. Money didn't do it, we didn't have much. Oh, praise his name, political connection didn't do it, we didn't have many. But I tell you one thing, that black people had, we still have faith. Oh, praise his name, faith that got us through 246 years of slavery. Faith that got us through 100 years of Jim Crow. Another 100 years of systemic injustice. Faith that got us through cotton fields and wagon wheels. Faith that got us over the mountains and over the reels. Faith that got us in the White House and walked away with a two term swagger. Thank God. and 
the feet of Jesus and said, Lord, help me. But Jesus said, go home. What, whatever you want, it's already at home. In other words, she asked for one thing, got what she asked for, but got more than what she asked for. She asked for mercy. She said, Lord, help me. But she got Chance, you got your chance. 